So coming up in this episode, I thought I would give Maryborough, Queensland just a whole episode on its own. It's a pretty epic place to have a look around. Um, if you know anything about Mary Poppins or read the books, uh, P.L. Travers was born in Maryborough. Was only there till she was about five, but she was born literally in Maryborough and they've got a whole museum around where she was born and all that sort of stuff. Maryborough was um, going to be the capital of Queensland, but the port of Maryborough couldn't actually bring in the big ships. It wasn't deep enough and it wasn't wide enough, so it never quite made it. But it's steeped in history from um, the first people, they've got remnants of uh, the first people being there 6,000 years ago, to, um, to Europeans coming in in the early 1800s through to it becoming a, an actual Europe, a, a place by a white settlement back in um, sort of the 1830s and 40s, etc, etc, etc. So sit back, it's about 13, 14 minutes long. Um, I hope you enjoy it. It is worth a visit if you're coming up this way. Just fun little stuff. They've got this amazing um, toilet block at the, at the town hall, the information centre called um, the Cistern Chapel. It's crazy. It's a cool place, worth a visit. The market was on. Um, enjoy. The best place to start any journey is obviously the information centre. So, good place to come in, have a chat, and make some decisions around directions that you are going to go. So just at the information boards in the middle of Maryborough, thought I would show you around very quickly just some amazing stories, you know, around um, floods and fires and all of those sorts of things. So yeah, when you're in Maryborough, definitely come in and have a look at these areas. The storyboards are stunning. Um, so much history in Maryborough. Maryborough was touted to be the next capital of Queensland, but it's flooded, it's burnt to the ground, uh, all of those sorts of things. So just a little bit, a humble start as a pioneer Woolport in 1847. So it's been around for a long time. The oldest town actually in Queensland is Gainda. And I'll do a, uh, a little video on that at some point, but definitely come in and have a look. One of the reasons that Maryborough didn't become the capital of Queensland is because the Mary River, where it goes out to the sea, is not actually deep enough. So, but there you go, just some amazing history. I'll definitely show you around a little bit more. I did a little uh, video at one point on um, the pigs and all that sort of stuff that used to roam around the area. But in the late 1800s, pigs, cows and goats would roam through the main streets. And they actually employed someone to take care of the nuisances, as they called it. So pretty cool spot, just some amazing history. The market's on today and I'll do some stuff on the market. The beautiful City Hall in Maryborough with the Big Ben style clock chiming every 15 minutes, which is absolutely stunning. But the architecture through this area really is beautiful. The market is on today, fresh coffee, vegan gluten-free donuts, and I'll take you in to have a look at the Cistern Chapel, which you might go, oh, that sounds pretty crap. See what I did there? But really, really interesting, just such an amazing, um, amazing murals and stuff like that in the actual toilets. So I will take you in at some point, not sure it's open yet, and give you a little bit of history behind the toilet. So the, the finest public toilets in Australia, a campaign to revamp the public toilet beside Maryborough Town Hall Green, had its beginnings in 2020. Local businesses and community members donated to the Divine Dunnies Project to make the toilets. On the side of this picturesque city hall, the finest in Australia, incorporating a Victorian Victoriana theme. Touches of Maryborough, colourful history, flowers, music and chandeliers has made these toilets an attraction for locals and tourists alike. Totally agree. It's pretty cool. It's not open just yet, but we'll get in and have a look a little bit. So later. just on the corner of Adelaide Street and Ken Street in Maryborough, so today being Thursday is the local markets. Really great selection, fresh food, clothing, um, trinkets, all of that sort of stuff. Awesome spot, uh, great architecture. I will go for a little walk up the street and show you around. Beautiful mural. 
murals around Maryborough. I'll uh, try to fit, squeeze a few of them in. So this is literally in the main street, town hall across the road, which you probably saw, and uh, and the market. Wow. So at the War Memorial in Maryborough, which I will show you in a second, but I want to read you just uh, a little passage. The Great War. The list of rational causes and triggers seems inexhaustible. All have validity, yet taken together or alone, these causes do not seem to get us closer to understanding why millions of young men had to die over four years of slaughter. Totally, totally agree. This is an absolutely stunning tribute to the to the wars, and tribute's probably the wrong word, memorial to the wars. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, it's got uh, audio where you can stop and actually listen to passages. The park here is beautifully maintained. The steam train comes down sort of through the corners there and follows along the Mary River. It is really, really beautiful. Moving, you walk along the path and there is um, little passages from what people have said about the Great War and that we're at the Great War and all, like, all of those sorts of things. So it is literally right in town. The market is there, Woolies. Uh, but the park is enormous and such a beautiful spot. And this time of year is stunning. Everything is coming into bloom. We've had quite a bit of rain last night and the beautiful trees are losing some of their leaves. But this is amazing. And there's storyboards everywhere. You could spend hours and hours and hours walking through here, reading stuff about the Great Wars. It's pretty moving to think what these young men and women had to go through back in those days. The only difference probably today is technology is uh, far more advanced and hand-to-hand -hand combat is probably less likely. But anyway, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful park. It's a stunning tribute to the people that have fallen and probably a reminder of uh, where we don't want to go again. But I will do a walk around and show you the park. It's beautiful stuff. Dead man's gas protector, a dead man's bayonet, my tunic's rotten with other men's blood. It's always a little bit busier, which is lovely. Always live music. The Cistern Chapels are just here. Bit of renovations going on on the town hall that we'll go in. And be in the room if you want to as well. Lovely. We'll do. Thank you. This is the parenting room. Just 
in the beautiful Queen's Park, which you would have seen um, the Great War Memorials and, and stuff. The Mary River is literally over there. And then throughout this whole area, which forms part of the port of Maryborough, is these beautiful murals that dot around this whole area. It's absolutely stunning. Well worth coming for a walk and having a look. It's such a beautiful park, such history through this area, which is absolutely amazing. But I'll walk you down to the port of Maryborough and also the Mary Rattler, which is the little steam train that comes through this area. I think it's every Tuesday and Thursday, but absolutely stunning. Here comes the Mary Rattler, which is the steam train which follows the track. It takes you all the way down to the wharfs, which is probably about five, six hundred metres down. You enter down here, which is basically part of the port. I think it's five dollars per person. Great little steam train. Always busy. Beautiful day for it today. It's not quite as hot. It's probably 25, 26 degrees. And there you have it, the Mary Rattler and the Mary River, which is just here. It's good fun. Why wouldn't you? This whole area forms part of the port of Maryborough. The Maryborough Courthouse, built 1878. Just stunning, stunning architecture. And just down here across the road is the museum, I guess you'll call it, for Mary Poppins and the whole story behind Mary Poppins and, uh, and the local area I'll have a chat with you about shortly. So beautiful, beautiful area being here. The streets are stunning. The buildings have been immaculately renovated and maintained considering they've probably been flooded five times and almost burnt to the ground or, or burnt to the ground. It is absolutely stunning. So I'm just going to go into the Bond store. 1864, sorry for my whispering. Just getting used to being on camera, but I'm gonna go in and have a look. back-to-back -back flooding just awesome history this is definitely one of my favorite towns Amazing, isn't it? Wow, well, step back in time. This building established 1857, just absolutely amazing. I love this area, beautiful murals. 
So this is the Maryborough Militia and Colonial Museum. Just history everywhere. I have walked through here quite a while ago, but I haven't been for, for some time. Love it. So the port is just over here. And this is part of the immigration department. We will go in and have a look and then we'll go just down here, which is the Mary Poppins display. came through this area or through this building. <laughs> this is the Story Bank and it's actually the home of the author of the Mary Poppins books, P.L. Travers. So I'll uh, see if I can have a bit of a walk around. So her original name was Helen Lyndon Goff became known as P.L. Travers. So there you go, this was actually her home. She was born here, didn't live here for very long, but there you go, absolutely world famous. Go me. So that's the original house. So this is just a little bit more about Helen Lyndon Goff, P.L. Travers, Mary Poppins. Few Australians know of Helen Lyndon Goff or P.L. Travers, yet most are familiar with the name Mary Poppins. Perhaps the writer of the Mary Poppins fantasies was referring to herself when she wrote. Just absolutely amazing. The history in this area is stunning. So she was born in this building, which is just extraordinary. So her parents were bank managers, she was born here and then travelled throughout Australia and then ultimately overseas. There you go, the home of Mary. Poppins. 